Hey guys, what's up? It's Offspring, and as you can see, this is not F1 2012. <laughs> no, this is iRacing, and it's an oval track race on uh, USA International Speedway. And the reason I'm posting this video is that, uh, well, after several months, uh, an entire season on F1 2012 with... Uh, the league at www.precisionracingleague.com my hours at work have changed and I'm not able to race with them anymore so um, I've built myself a gaming PC so that I can run uh, iRacing at a good uh, good, resolu good resolution with good graphics and I've gotten back on here um, I was on iRacing back in 2011 and got myself out of the rookie series uh, on the road racing side but never got out of rookies on the oval series because they were running the legends at the time and I did not like the legends. It just the cars just looked goofy to me. So I I didn't like racing those. But when I heard that street stocks were back on the oval as a rookie class race, oh, I was all in. Now, I want to start off by saying I'm not a fast driver on the oval. Um, like I say, I have little experience on the oval track. But I heard a lot of people talking about how hard it is to get out of the rookie level, the rookie license, on the old tracks. And we're getting ready to go green here, so we're going to see what happens. Um, and we're green. One of the things that was said about the rookie license and trying to get out of the rookie license is that things like what just happened in front of me happen to you all the time on track. And although it does happen sometimes, I don't think it happens with the frequency that people claim it does. Um, you'll see a lot of accidents in this video. But the one thing you will not see is constant, constant crashing into me. Um, I was able to get out of the rookie class with just a few races on the open. Now, in this race, I have joined a low split. Now, low split for people who don't know iRacing. Um, let's say you have 50 guys who all want to do a street stock race all at the same time. Well, if only 20, I think it's 16 as a matter of fact, but let's say 16 people, let's say only 16 people are able to get onto the track at any given time. Well, they have to split that 50 up in the 16 person fields. Uh, so what they do is they choose the fastest 16, put them in one room, the second fastest 16, put them in another room, and those are called splits. So if you are on the last split, they have what's called strength of field, which shows uh, the strength, or I don't even know exactly how it's calculated, but basically, if you're in the bottom split, and there's five splits, you're in a strength of field of people who barely can get the car started. Uh, I mean, you're in with some really bad racers. So, one of my tips for getting out of the rookie class is don't try to win these races. The wins will come to you later on. But if you go into a race like this one, trying to win a race, you're more than likely going to end up crashing. Because some of the people that are in this race are really, really fast. But they can't drive worth crap. <laughs> Um, so you'll see here that I have to get myself towed back to the pits because I was wrecked by somebody behind me because he didn't break for the turn. And I watched the replay. I didn't cut in on him. He just never hit his brakes. And that's going to happen to you from time to time. But the thing to remember is that a collision like that is four points. It means that four points are taken off your safety rating. Now, it's not your fault. So what? It doesn't matter. Okay, everybody gets points taken off of them for a collision. So, right there I had four points taken off my safety rating. Now, the fact that I collided with the wall afterwards doesn't matter. It was all part of the same incident, so it's four points. Okay. <coughs> so,
so as I sit here in pit row, waiting for him to finish towing me, and then finally do a quick uh, quick service on my vehicle. Um, all these cars going past me, uh, I'm being lapped, and you can sit there being aggravated, or you can put it in your head that when you come out of here, you're just going to drive as safe as you can drive. You don't want to drive too slow because you'll slow other people down and you'll actually cause wrecks. But what you want to do is you want to realize that you've been lapped. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna unlap yourself by however many laps you were lapped because the guys in here have a lot of experience. Even the people in here with the low safety ratings, they have a lot of experience because they've been doing this a while. After this race. I looked at the safety rating of all the people in the room, and I was astonished, literally astonished, to see how many people had a safety rating below a one, okay? <laughs> that means the person who, I, I, I can't, it's hard to describe. If you're in a license class of C or above, and you got a one, if you got below a one on your license level, you'd be demoted to a lower license level. Like, it's that bad. So when you get into a race like this, and you're in the bottom split, and you look at the license level of the other people in the race, and see that they have license levels below one, more than likely these people are stuck. They don't know what they're doing wrong, they're screwing up, they're crashing, they don't know how to get out of this license level. So the best thing to do is to go into every race thinking you are the safest driver on the track, okay? This will keep you from making stupid mistakes. For example, if you're driving along at your pace and you see a car coming up behind you really, really fast, now that guy might very well be a really fast driver. But who's to say whether he's a safe driver or not? Well, if he's in a bottom split with you, then he's no better or safer than you are. And more than likely, being a fast driver that's in a bottom split, that means that he has not completed very many races. He's probably wrecked out of quite a few. So when you get a fast driver like that, coming up behind you real quick, don't try to block him. Don't try to guard your position get out of the way, okay, because nine times out of ten, he's going to wreck both of them. So as you see here, I'm starting to catch back up with part of the field, okay. Um, the guy in front of me is relatively cautious, and as, I could, as far as I can tell, he's relatively safe. Doesn't mean he's a good driver, doesn't mean he's great, but he's relatively safe. So I, I don't mind getting a little bit closer to him because he seems like he is about on the same level I am. You know, right there I got uh, a little bit loose and had to uh, drop back quite a bit. <laughs> so racing safely and racing slowly are two different things. You can race safely without racing slowly. Uh, as you see here, I'm watching both these cars in front of me uh, for a collision. Now, the first car, the number 11 on my right there, the green and blue car, he went wide. And if he had touched the wall, one of the first things a rookie driver is going to do is try to get off the wall by steering to the left, which means that he's going to come right back onto the track with a lot of help from that wall. <laughs> now, the car in front of me, uh, I believe it's number eight, the orange and black car. Ooh, that was close. The orange and black car, if he had not seen the green and blue car coming down off the wall, he may have collided with it. And then I would have been left staring at a situation where I had to steer either right into the wall or left into the wall or straight ahead into those drivers. So the best thing to do when you see a situation like that happening is to just ease off a little bit. Slow down a bit. Give yourself enough time to make a decision. Give yourself enough time to, to make a play for a little space between the wall and a car. You know, 
make sure that you have time to turn. Now, if it slows you down and allows a car behind you to pass, let it go by. You know, it's much better to, to lose one position than to sit in the pits getting lapped because you decided you were going to hold the gas pedal down and go straight ahead. Now, see, this guy is spinning two cars right there off to the left. And both myself and the car ahead made it through. Now, when I came out of the pits, I was in dead last. Now, here I've already made up three positions. It's not shorted on the ticker up top yet because that thing's behind. But if you watch that ticker, you'll see that I've made up three positions now. After being dead last, after being lapped, I'll be moving up in the order. See, I'm unlapping myself slowly. I'm in eighth place now after being in eleventh. Now, again, I want to stress: driving safely doesn't mean you can't race. It doesn't mean you can't try to make passes. It doesn't mean you can't try to improve your position. But what I want to stress to you is make sure that you understand what your skill level and the skill level of the drivers around you is. If you don't have the skill to drive between two cars uh, going through a three wide turn, don't do it. You'll wreck all three cars. And if you don't have the skill level to fight off somebody, who, uh, fight off a faster car who's coming up behind you, don't do it. Don't close the door. Let it go by. And even if you do have the skill level, you need to understand that the person behind you may not have that skill level. If he's already decided that he's going to take you on the inside, and you close that door, he may not have the reaction time to hit his brakes or to back off enough to avoid hitting you. Now right there, both myself and the car in front of me slowed down because it looked like the other car was going to spin, and that was a smart play by both of us. Neither one of us lost, lost position, but if that car had spun in front of us, it would have given both of us time to react, and that is a smart play. Now, still being a rookie, not every move that I make is smart, <laughs> but that's what the rookie class is for. The rookie class is learning how to drive safely. Now, right there, I was trying to pass the car in front of me, and I had a good run. But there was another car off to the bottom that could have interfered with the pass, so I backed off. Now guys, this is the first time I've done a commentary on any of my videos except for my Nazi zombie, Nazi zombie big baller achievement guy. So here, he was going wide, I took the inside line, I'm waiting to hear my spotter, my spotter says it's all clear, so I start coming back out. That right there is the kind of pass that you can make with practice. It's not a hard pass to make. Just saying it before you try something like that, just practice. There are several practice sessions that take place before the races. You can join one, two, three, four. You can practice a full day before you get into a race. And that's a smart thing to do. And if you get into a practice session, don't be afraid to try all this stuff that I'm telling you not to do in the race. Uh, go ahead and try that stuff. Get used to it. Get used to uh, passing on the inside. Get used to, to blocking or to defending your position. The last thing you want to do is try that stuff for the first time in a race. But another thing I would say is to keep an eye on the people that are practicing with you. And if you see a guy who runs really well, try running with him. See how he's running. And during the race, if you encounter that guy again, you'll know exactly what he's capable of and exactly uh, how close you can get to him, you know, and how well you can, or how hard you can race him. 
And uh, some of the races that I've done later on, you'll see a good example of that. I was able to race somebody really close uh, in a later race just because I had practiced with him and knew his skill level. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm catching this guy in front of me. He's already got damage on his back fender. Now that could have been from somebody hitting him or it could have been from him uh, coming down on somebody. You don't know what caused the damage, so you want to be very careful. Um, as you can see, he's very unpredictable. I've seen the back end slide out a couple times. He's weaving all over the road, so I'm not going to make any stupid decisions. I'm just going to keep pressure on him from back here. Now he's blinking, and that's never a good sign. <laughs> so I'm just going to put pressure on him, and hopefully he'll screw up on his own. See, if I had stuck to that inside line, he would have wrecked us right there. <laughs> and my back is spinning out. I've only got a few laps to go. So I want to let you guys know that uh, I will be posting more videos like this. If you like these videos, please uh, leave me a like or leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And again, I'm not trying to show any skill level here. Okay, this is a rookie race, and it's a bottom split to boot. So I don't need to hear any comments about how I suck. Well, that sucked for him. I don't need to hear any comments about how I suck and how I'm a bad driver and all this stuff. Uh, it's like, no kidding, guys. It's a rookie class bottom split. All I'm doing here is I'm showing you guys that it is possible to get out of rookie class and get into higher splits. So if you guys will remember, uh, after that wreck I had early on, I was in 11th, now I'm up to 5th. Well, according to the ticker, I'm up to 5th. <laughs> And there you go. As the ticker shows, I've made it up to fourth. From 11th to fourth. And that was after being lapped in the pits. So that just goes to show that driving safely and staying out of trouble will gain you positions. You don't have to race hard for it. And that, that should do it for the race. That's the last lap right there. But I made it to fourth in the last lap. And this is how it works, guys. It really is that easy. Stay out of trouble. Don't try to race for, for a win. Because you'll just end up wrecking yourself. Guys, I'm going to be doing more videos like this. Uh, there will be more street stocks. There will be some, uh, some late models. And I'll even post some road racing. If you like these videos, please leave a comment and hit that like button. And let me know you want to see more. Um, I'll post a few until people start seeing them. Uh, after that, we'll have to see how it goes. Alright guys, that's it. Have a good day.